Welcome to Lazy Boys Night. This is Dude. This is Dude. Hey. Tonight we're drinking, uh, what are we drinking here? Oh, wait a second, I'll pour first. <laughs> Muskoka, Can we should read the pour? label first, huh? Muskoka Hazed and Confused Juicy IPA. Ooh, looks good. Ooh, good head there. And also in tonight's episode, have you seen Caddyshack? Caddyshack! All right. It's just two guys talking, there they go again, say anything, talking about nothing, nothing new to say, talking anyway, so much to review, so let's have a cold brew, a cold brew, everybody's talking, it's not Cheers. Juicy, hazy, hazy and diffused. Oh, wow. Oh, that's nice. That's super nice. Yeah, well, You're going to start to think that we like all the beers, right? But it's not the case. Uh, it's, it's, it's often the we, case. We try to find the most positive in anything we yes. have, but We're optimists. Optimists. Oh, we're optimists. Optimist prime beer drinkers. Oh, you just went little Transformers there, but that's I okay. I did. You did. This is nice. Oh, it won a World Beer Award of some sort. I'd read more, but I don't have my glasses, so we're just going to say, well done. You just made it. Why? <laughs> you made sound so old. What? Young people wear glasses, too. Does it? Do they? Yeah. I guess they do, right? Yeah. That's just not just us. Oh, I said us, including myself. You're older than me. Mm -mm. All right. That's so, true. as we said, have you seen Caddyshack? Oh. There we go. Nice glare on there. I know, thank you. I did the glare myself. That's an awesome fade to glare. So, if you're not familiar with Caddyshack, uh, this movie was released in 1980. Yes, we're very dated. And why do we re review movies that old? Well, because uh, essentially we just want to bring back some classics. And we're very curious to see if they can stand the test of time. They don't always do. Nope. You've seen the modern movies. Go back to the classics. Yeah. So this stars such names as Bill Murray. In fact, one of his first movie roles. Uh, Chevy Chase. Uh, other people you might remember or might not. Uh, Ted Knight. And uh, Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield. Dangerfield. Yes. No respect. Oddly enough, no the respect. principal character, some guy, I don't even know his name, the, the, the caddy himself. Yeah, I'm not even sure if he did anything <laughs> after that. We can look it up and find out if he did or not. But uh, So, yeah. overall impressions, good movie, bad movie? Well, uh, re-watched it recently, just to make sure that we were up to speed and we weren't just talking from our back end memories. <laughs> back end memories? <laughs> talking at your butt? Yeah, exactly. There you go. Okay. So, um... I thought it held up. There, there's a few references in there that you probably wouldn't be able to get away with today. Yeah. But if you put yourself into the context of the time that it was done, like many things now, we're but, not going to cancel this movie. But that's not what held up means. Context at the time, it worked then. No, held up I mean, means does it still work now? Yeah, I'm saying comedy-wise, it held, it held up. I mean, I still laughed. I, oh, I, I still laughed. Yeah, there was no moment where I went, ah, you know what? I remember this being a better movie. It was exactly as good as I remembered. And that's the, what I mean by held up. The thing I found, and, and this is common to a lot of movies of the era as opposed to movies today, is there's really not much of a plot. Unlike today where, oh, storyline, character development, boom, boom, boom. This is really just, yes, we'll explain your lovely little boogie in a moment. But this is basically, um, let's have interesting characters, each have their own little shenanigans with very, very, very minor plot lines. Yeah. Let's have one major plot line, which is really just, hey, some kid wants to get a golf scholarship. That's pretty much the entire movie. That's pretty much it. Some, but then some you've got kid in the big side family, rivalries, yeah. right? You've got the side rivalry yeah. between Ted Knight and Rodney Dangerfield. You've got the side rivalry with Ted Knight and Chevy Chase. You've got the rivalry between some of the caddies. You've got the, uh, the the rivalry between Bill Murray and 
The little and hedgehog. The gopher. The gopher? The gopher. It's the gopher. I should know that. It's, oh, oh, I'm so disappointed. Uh, What's the difference? There is a difference. Yeah, yeah. hedgehog is like a porcupine. <laughs> I know. A gopher is like a I giant know. gerbil. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've got all these side stories, which actually most of them never really get resolved. There's no resolution to this. None. None. It just, it just no. ends with it. It ends with a bang mm -hmm. uh, and a dancing gopher. That's about it. So, you know, there's a slight pregnancy issue at one point, which we never scary. really... Okay. It's there and then it goes it's... away magically. So, so basically, I have a feeling this actress, they're like, show up on set today. You're going to be there for about two hours. We're going to film all your scenes. Thank you. That's it. We never see you again. And yet you're some kind of big... Well, is it really a big plot line? It's not even... It's no. just... It's thrown in there. But it's, it's great comedic actors. Yes. And the setting is pretty much all on the golf course. At that in a yacht club. That's yeah, it. so those are the two big sets. But the fact that the, the, the interaction between those back in the day, those comedic geniuses together, that interplay was fantastic. That's the main point. I think this is really a showcase for comedic talent. Oh, for Bill sure. Murray, do your thing. A lot yeah. of his scenes are improvised. Chevy Chase, do, do your, your quirky thing. character yeah. thing. Rodney Dangerfield, you're the insult king. Walk around, be obnoxious, and insult people. And that's pretty much what it is. It's, let's take these stereotypes, put them together, let them do their craft, and maybe we can cobble a story out of it. They did well. They did well. So is it funny? Yes. Yeah. Are you going to get like, wow, that was a great story? Oh, hell no. no <laughs> there, there, there is really no story there. But that was never the point. No, and it's a different time too. And it, it's uh, the film was also done by the the same gang that did uh, uh, the National Lampoon movies. Uh, well, Harold Ramis directed. So uh, that that mindset, there, the, the way they were back in that time, the way they looked at comedy, the pacing for comedy, the absurdity of it, and you know what, uh, the the one thing that I had forgotten about that I really enjoyed is how straightforward and to the point they are oh yeah with delivering jokes and it's <laughs> like i'm I, you know asking dude blunt is, humor is my beer good no no it's not it's just it's not only funny not like this example it's <laughs> the build up to it blunt humor mm -hmm. which mm, <laughs> you're offended now aren't you yeah yes um i lost my point now oh what actually yeah, stands... you insulted me, so oh. your mind went somewhere else. What stands the test place. of time? What stands the test of time? Uh, I think the the character archetypes stand the test of time. You've got the underdog golf guy. You've got the 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 tyrant blowhard authority figure. You've got the dumb sidekick. You've the got the Zen teacher that doesn't want to be a teacher. Yeah. So the archetypes still work. They're funny. What does not hold up? I, you got. And this is going to be really? dead air. No, 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 no. What like for me? It's going to be oh, dead here, air. Here's one thing that didn't He's hold up. He's going to go though. He's oh, going to yeah. go off. You're going to expect I'm about, to go off. I'm going to go off. Um, the main caddy guy, who we can't even remember his name, even though he's probably technically the lead of this movie, has a girlfriend. There is an attractive, rich blonde who kind of shows up. And his girlfriend sees him eyeing this blonde. Everybody's eyeing her. She's a very attractive woman. And, of course, she gets jealous, but she still sticks with the guy. They sleep together, the guy and his girlfriend. The next night, he's at a party. He sleeps with the blonde. No issues towards that. Comes back a few days later. There's this pregnancy scare with the girlfriend. The, the and, morning after he sleeps with yeah, the blonde. with the blonde. Rich blonde. Yeah. And then there's like, um, well, I'll marry you. First of all, you, you just slept with someone else the night before, even though you're already in a relationship with her. I'm like... That's a plot hole to you? It's not a plot hole. It's It doesn't... Doesn't hold up? It doesn't hold up. I think, you don't think that would happen today? Well, let me put it this way. I don't not think it wouldn't happen. Did that make sense? I'm sure there are people like that all around. And, that would and totally still make that, it happen that, today. I, I know it would happen. But the point is, if it happened today, the guy would be a villain. 
Okay, so the but guy would be context, more portrayed. Okay, we're yeah. going in a completely different yeah, direction. Yeah, it, it would still happen, so but the guy saying. would be considered gotcha. a jerk, a villain. Yeah. Uh, all these things. Like, how could you do yeah, this? So everybody Whereas there, it's just like, that guy it's all right. He slept nice. with someone yeah, else. That's it. okay. Boom. Oh, you're pregnant. Okay. Oh, you're. And it's just matter of fact that he's still the hero. Okay, so for you, the difference between then and now is that in movies back then, when this was made in the you know 1980, literally what guys did sexually was way more accepted than what girls but the rich girl in this movie sleeps around with almost the entire that is actually quite progressive she's and a very she's not considered a slut she's I, not it's not meant her her uncle the rich guy has an issue and he knows about it and they don't really talk about it within the family but they're aware of it so they seem okay with it i thought that was actually progressive so that's though. very different she was okay with her sexuality and that was that, and it's fine. But she doesn't. She's not in a relationship. Yeah, she doesn't cheat around. She just sleeps she around. She makes it obvious that that's what she and does. It's, and it's and I'm cool with that. He sleeps around behind his girlfriend's back, and he's still considered the hero. And that's why I don't think that would stand up. I think today, that would be a villain move, not a hero move. Ha! Very interesting. I know. Now let's talk about the real star of the movie, the Gopher. The Gopher. The Gopher. The. Go <laughs> Basically, this is Bill Murray's plot line throughout the entire movie. He's this dumb caretaker on the golf course, and there's this little golfer that's clearly a puppet, but a very cute one. Very oh, cute. yeah, very adorable. He did, he did very well with taking an, a live-action movie comedy and then having the cojones to put a puppet in a wanting-to-be blockbuster movie, big-budget movie, yeah. with big-budget stars, and... The opening sequence starts yeah. with this puppet, so you're going, what am I sitting down to watch? But, but it's so cute. This this is like the Baby Yoda of 1980. Oh, yeah. I, it's that cute. Yeah. It's the Baby Yoda of 1980. But basically, Bill Murray's entire premise in this movie is to get rid of the gopher that's tearing up this golf course. And... Um, I don't want to give away spoilers, but no. let's just say the his his methods are not quite efficient. And that is one hell of a smart gopher. But think about it. And a good so answer. Bill Murray, Bill Murray spent most of the film having this rivalry with a puppet, and it works. <laughs> anyway, Bill Murray can make it pull it off. He pulls it off very well. But yeah, his character and himself, he he was able to pull something off that uh, very very few actors would be able to do. True. Bottom line, you want a good. Somewhat dated, but still good laugh. Absolutely great. You want a great story? Go somewhere else. That's my opinion. Mm. I'm not. I'm not going into the story thing because there's not. Because there's no story. We've gone through this. <laughs> but if you want a good movie, a fun movie. Yes. A comedy movie. Yes. With well cast and just funny moments, and it dates it well in the sense that I could see somebody making that movie today. To make it feel like it was back in the 80s or 70s. You know what I mean? It's like almost like it's... To make it retro? Yeah. So it's almost like the, the movie is so retro that it's in. Just yes. Just how it looks. But it would have to be retro. If it was set in 2021, I don't no, know. No, that's what, what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying that it, All right. it would be retro. So see it? So, so see it. See it. All right. How, oh, wait, wait. How, how many beers do we give it? We need a beer rating system. We need a beer rating system? Yes. How many beers? Okay. As a movie overall, is there comedy? Because that's different. As a comedy. As a comedy, um, I would give it for, let's say for myself, how often I laughed out loud yeah. and how funny I found it. I would give it a solid 3.5 beers. Three and a half beers. Three beers in a shot. Three beers in a shot out of five potential yeah. beers. So three oh, wait, beers wait, it should shot. be out of a six pack. Oh. All right, so. Okay, so, we're changing it now. So it's out of a six pack. Okay, so that doesn't make it any easier. So give it four and a half. So, no, it's, it's going to be four beers then. Four beers, okay. Four beers out of a six pack for yeah. a comedy. So, I agree, comedy, I'd give it four beers out of a six pack uh, for a comedy. So, Caddyshack? Yep. Four, four out beers of six out of beers. six beers. There we go. Have you seen Caddyshack? Go you see have it. now. Cheers.